Sandy Wiley. Welcome to my mental health channel. Today we're going to do a little bit of Freud. Repetition compulsion. Ever hear of that term? What is that? Well, it's a psychological phenomenon in which an individual repeatedly reenacts a traumatic event or its circumstances seemingly in an attempt to master, heal, or understand the event, even though it may result in harm. It's a concept rooted in Freudian psychoanalysis, suggesting that people are compelled to repeat past behaviors or events. Now, we all learned in school that history repeats itself, right? Have you studied history? Have we learned anything from our past? Well, let's see what Freud has to say about this. This can manifest in various ways, such as repeatedly seeking out abusive relationships or engaging in self-destructive behaviors. Because you see like, the, like a chain reaction... If you were abused, if your mother hits you or beats you, then what happens is you grow up and hit and beat your children. And if they have children, they grow up and hit and beat their children. So it, it keeps, is, see, it keeps getting reenacted. Unless someone gets help and stops the behavior. Someone gets psychological help or goes, or goes through their own inner work and, and stops that. Um, or like if you saw your, um, your father beat your mother, chances are high because you were raised like that and you lived in, the, in that environment that you will marry or have boyfriends that beat you up because that's what you saw your father do to your mother all growing up. So naturally, you reenact that and pick men that are physically abusive to you. See, this is what this is all about. While repetition compulsion may temporarily alleviate anxiety or distress, it ultimately hinders therapeutic progress and can per perpetuate cycles of trauma. Like I said, if you know you were beaten and then you, as a child, and you go beat your children, they beat their children. You know what I mean? It keeps repeating itself. Trauma is a universal experience, and it can be defined as a gap between the external threat and one's inner resource to deal with it. At any time that a person is overwhelmed by fear or hopelessness, they have experienced such an event. Humans tend to seek comfort in what is familiar with them. Sigmund Freud, our old friend, a second, it's just a second, called this repetition compulsion, which he defined. Freud defined this as the desire to return to an earlier state of things, okay? So if you wonder, you know, why do I always pick losers for boyfriends? Wonder no more. Look back on your childhood. Look back at your relationship with your parents. Look back how your father treated you. Look back how your father treated your mother. Look back and there's your answer. Why do you pick, keep picking losers as boyfriends or husbands or... There is your answer. Okay. Repetition, compulsion can involve people continue, continuously putting themselves in a situation they know is not healthy perhaps without even realizing that they are repeating their past traumas. Okay, so I don't, we, I don't think that you do that consciously, you know. You don't go out there and say, hey, let me pick a loser like my dad, a guy that's going to treat me like shit, just like my dad treated my mom, or my, dra my dad walked out and my mom cheated on my mom. So I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick guys like my dad who cheat on me and walk out on me or treat me like dirt. Because that's what I grew up with. That's what I'm familiar with. That's what I'm comfortable with. I don't, you know, I see what I'm saying? But you're not doing it consciously. Despite knowing that relationships are destructive, we may continue demonstrating patterns of these type of relationships. We may be trying to fix what happened in the past, 
by recreating the trauma with new relationships. With some arguing that we have an innate desire to complete something which has already begun. All right, here's some examples of repetition compulsion. Someone who has experienced abuse, I brought that up without even, without even reading this, I brought that up. As a child goes on to have abusive adult relationships. Now, that, that is so obvious. I didn't have to even read it. Someone who experienced violence in their childhood is more likely to become a perpetrator of violence later in life. Someone with post-traumatic stress disorder, and I've been diagnosed with that along with borderline personality disorder, has reoccurring dreams of the traumatic experiences. I have reoccurring nightmares of fire in my old house. Maybe because I blocked out so much of the trauma that I just want to burn the memories. So I have these reoccurring dreams. Ever since for 18 years I've had these dreams. I moved in this house in 2005, the house I'm in now. So I've lived here for 18 years. And I have reoccurring dreams of the old, my old childhood house burning on fire. I think what my subconscious is trying to do is burn those traumatic memories so that I'll never remember. It's trying to burn it all down, you know. It's worked. <laughs> but, um... Someone who has an emotionally distant parent or caregiver goes on to have an adult have adult relationships with people who are also emotionally distant. Think back. Was your, one, your mother or father emotionally distant? Neglected you? Maybe they had a substance abuse issue. Look at the guys you're dating. Are they are they emotionally distant? Hmm. Wonder why. <laughs> See, I'm trying to get you to think, okay? I'm trying to get you guys to think. Why am I doing what I am doing? Why do I keep repeating the same pattern in all my relationships? Repetition compulsion. That's what Sigmund Freud is teaching us. This is why you are doing that. This is why you're choosing those people. All right. After being a victim of crime, some women seek out horror movies or watch a lot of crime documentary, documentaries to re-experience similar feelings. Why is change hard? Repetition compulsion is just that, compulsion. When we repeat the past, we are not doing it on purpose. Rather, it is learned response to what we already know. Here we go. Why do we repeat the past? Chaos feels familiar. We do not know anything different. Inflexible defenses. It is just the way things are. Uh-uh. We seek comfort in what is familiar and predictable. Poorly regulated emotional reactions. A need to recreate history. I will get it right this time. Past trauma is not remembered. Making future threats less easy to identify. I, it isn't specifically remembered, but I do know that I suffered traumatically. Um, I just don't know the details. I don't want to know the details because what I do know is pretty horrendous. Okay. Um, familiarity of chaos. Individuals may find change hard because they are so familiar with the chaos that they see, they see it, it as normal. As a child, humans absorb what is presented to them. Yeah, human, um, children are like sponges. They, they absorb everything around them. Remember that if you're a parent, even adult children, you think like my son's 26, it doesn't matter. He still absorbs everything around him. I often hear him repeat what he hears his father say at 26 years old. Be very, very careful what you say because you are shaping another life if you're a parent, okay? And just be very careful what you say anyway to people because, honestly, you have no idea what effect words are. You know that saying, sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me? That's rubbish. You can get over broken bones easily, but words can scar you 
the light. So I don't know who said that, who invented that saying, but I'm telling you it's nonsense, okay? It's bull. Whoever invented that saying, that's bull. That's my opinion. You can have your own. This is my channel. I'll state my opinions. As a child, humans, absor yeah, I already said that, experiencing a parent with narcissistic tendencies, that was my mother, or frequently observing abuse, they may have no reason to believe that this environment is not normal. They grew up like that. At that time in their lives, a child has no way of comparison to what they experience because they don't know how other people live. They only know how they live, right? Thus, when they are older, they may, suspicious, they may be suspicious of having a relationship with someone who is not a reflection of their chaotic upbringing. Right. So, or maybe they just think they're not worth it, you know. They don't deserve someone good and kind who treats them with respect because they, they never had that. Maybe they, they don't feel like they're worth that. Ever think of that? But they're not doing this on a, on a conscious level. It's subconscious. Inflexible defenses. People may have a rigid way of protecting themselves against the experience of repeating their trauma. They believe there is no point in trying to stop it and that this is just the way things are. A lot of people say that, you know. It's just the way it is, you know. However, this way of thinking can unintentionally result in the reenactment occurring anyway. All right, what about re creatures of habit? As humans, we tend to seek comfort, of course, in what's familiar and what is predictable. Sometimes we revert to familiarity because the outcome is predictable. You know, it feels safe because we know what to expect. And even healthy change is scary. Gee, because, you know, we don't know what to expect. So even if it's you know, in our best interests, we don't know what to expect. And that's scary in itself. The unknown is always scary. We'd rather go with the known, the devil known than, you know, uh, the unknown. Someone experiencing repetition compulsion might believe that new experiences will be more painful than their present situation. New experiences are too new and untested. So it often feels safe to return to what you know. Emotional dysregulation. Someone may find change difficult if they have poorly regulated emotional reactions in response to negative stimuli. And that's the number one trait in a borderline. Um, I can't regulate my emotions. A parent or caregiver may have shut down a child when they got upset and did not comfort them. My mother did that to me all the time. She used to yell and scream at me and say it was my fault when my schizophrenic father went into his psychosis. When I'd get frightened, she'd say, look at that. You know, you always make things worse because I was frightened and I wanted her comfort and she wasn't going to give me any comfort. And then like, I have to stay with him. I have to stay married to this nut because of you. If I didn't have you, I could have left him. They did split up anyway. He walked out on her, but... Someone with poorly regulated emotional reactions may be very sensitive to criticism and interpret this as harsh and respond in a hostile way. Without tackling emotional dysregulation, people can be stuck in repetitive emotional cycles. A need to recreate history. It can be hard to change. Yes, when we need when we need to recreate history, those who seek out familiar relationships may try to recreate what happened to them during a traumatic event as a way to change the outcome and thereby gain mastery over what couldn't be controlled as a child. For instance, someone may continue to be in familiar, intimate relationships with the hope they, they can get it right this time around. Unless you do the inner work on yourself, you're never going to get it right. Just letting you know. Because you're not going to see those patterns from your past trauma, your childhood, your abusive childhood. You're not going to recognize what you are doing, you know, in your present life unless you go back to your past life. Now, you don't have to go back like me. I didn't go back and I didn't, I don't know all the abuse in the hands of my cruel, wicked, evil mother when my father left and was in, in mental in McLean's Mental Institute. I don't know that. But what I do know is I was severely abused and 
you know, I see the mistakes I made because of that now. I don't need to know every single stinking detail of it, you know. The idea is that childhood wounds that are subconsciously programming from childhood is going to be replayed in an attempt by the individual to gain mastery over their experience. Because ultimately in childhood, there was a certain level of helplessness. Of course, a child can't. A child needs a, every baby needs a mother out in the wild. The animals, baby birds, they can't fly, you know. They need mom, right? They can't fly, they can't get food. They need their mother to go fly away, get the food and bring it back and even feed them regurgitated food. Hear that? Yeah. So there you have it. I mean, it's not just us humans. It's out there. It's all babies. All babies need the parents. There is some evidence to suggest that to cope with a traumatic event, our brains may block our capacity to remember it. Bingo! You're looking at her! I blocked out a big chunk of my childhood. This might happen through dissociation. Bingo! Another, another thing. You dissociate, so you're out-of-body experience. You're not in what is happening to you. You're not there. Okay? Like a dead person. You know, your body is there, but when you're dead, your spirit is outside your body. It's just a body. Okay? It's not you. When you dissociate, it's kind of like being a dead person. It might be the body. You know, your, your mother or father's beating you up or your father's doing things to you that he shouldn't. I don't want to say it because on my channel. You just lay there and, and you're just a body and you're your mind and spirit are outside of the situation. That's dissociating. All right. Uh, likewise, the brain may block out our capacity to remember after the event through a type of amnesia. And I have that amnesia. I don't know if I spoke about it. I might have not spoken too much about it, but I do have childhood amnesia. I have dissociated and I have blocked out big chunks of my childhood. These mental escapes can inhibit our ability to identify similar threats in the future, making it more likely they will happen again. Okay, impact of repetition compulsion. Re-victimize. Due to a trauma in early life, repetition compulsion may make someone more likely to, to re-victimize themselves later in life. For instance, if a child is a victim of abuse, they may be more likely to end up in situations where they have faced with abuse again as adults. The need to get it right means that these individuals tend to gravitate towards relationships and circumstances that mimic the ones that they don't feel loved and accepted, just like when they were children. And you don't even know you're doing it. No resolution. If patterns are continually repeated without being addressed, the underlying issues may never be resolved. While it may seem as if someone is healing and has grown, in reality, they may find themselves in a position where their current anxieties become overwhelming. So they regress into the, those repetitive compulsions because they are familiar and comforting. Reopening emotional wounds. The reasoning with many people is that they stay, they stay in re-traumatizing relationships. They will eventually get it right and, and receive the love and acceptance, acceptance they need. However, emotional wounds will continue to reopen as a relationship feels, causing more pain. I swear, I, I you know, did this um, re repetition compulsion in my therapies with all my, with most of my shrinks because I kept getting re-traumatized. One psychologist after another kept re-traumatizing me, so. Self-destructive behaviors. Many people who experience trauma as children tend to take their hurt and anger out on themselves. I drink now because I've been re-traumatized by my therapist. I didn't in the past. These behaviors include self-harming, drug and alcohol abuse, and eating disorders. Eating disorders. You know, sugar is, is a drug. Caffeine is a drug. You know, if you like to binge eat, you're harming yourself just like if you're drinking or taking, you know, or doing recreational drugs. 
Sometimes people will reenact violence that was done to them as, ch as a child as a way of dealing with past hurts. Therefore, they are perpetuating their victimhood onto others. Like I told you, if you were beaten, you have children, you beat your, you beat your children, and so on and so on. Low self-esteem. Experiencing trauma can diminish a person's self-esteem and self-worth. They may believe that they deserve to be mistreated and that it is somehow, you know, like their fault. Like my mother blaming me. You know, it's you. You know, you make my life miserable. You make my life hard. I could leave your father if it wasn't for you. A child may rationalize that being placed in foster care was something they deserve rather than a necessity for their safety. These internalized beliefs can damage self-esteem and can result in self-sabotaging behaviors later in life. So, of course, how can repetition compulsion affect your relationship? The number one thing is seeking the wrong person, right? You may enter into relationships with toxic people, narcissists, narcissistic psychologists, someone who wants to be controlling, abusive, someone who victimizes them. They, you may attract someone who's emotionally unavailable or who gives very minimal amounts of love when it suits them. Detachment. Detachment is a coping mechanism that can be used by someone who experienced abuse as a child. This refers to a person's inability to fully engage with their feelings or the feelings of others. They detached. A child who learns to detach themselves as a form of protection is likely to continue to use this coping mechanism as an adult. So, you know, um, they just don't deal. They don't deal with it. That's how they deal. They don't deal. They just detach themselves from the problem and hope it goes away because they're not going to deal with it. They're not going to get involved. Physically, emotionally, they're not going to be there for you. They're detached. They had to do that growing up, so they learned that as a coping mechanism. All right. Managing repetition compulsions. Address the past. I think that's really the only way um, to do it. I, I mean, I could read on, you know, consider therapy, read on and on and on about this. But the number one thing I'm just going to give you from my personal experience is you have to address the past, okay? If you don't learn from the past, you can never have a present. You know, you'll repeat it in the present. I mean, if you don't learn from the past, you'll repeat it in the present and you'll have no future. Your future will, you'll have, it will be the same, you see? You have to go back. I mean, you don't have to recover everything. But you do have to recover um, enough to know that you were done wrong, that you were harmed. Uh, you don't have to know every little detail of how you were harmed, okay? I'm not telling you to reopen Pandora's box. But you have to know that something really bad happened to you. And that is why in the present you're making very bad choices. And that you can control that. That you don't have to live like that. You don't have to be a prisoner of your past anymore. Okay? You have the key to unlock those chains that you chain yourself in. Remember that. You hold the key. All you have to do is admit to yourself that yes, this happened. Yes, I was I was sinned against. I was severely abused. I was severely neglected. I was, and you fill in the blank. And that's why I pick losers. You know, I pick these people, these boyfriends or these therapists that re-traumatized re me all over again. And once you see the pattern like I did, I saw the pattern. I said, I'm never, ever going to another therapist again. Or you could say, I'm never, ever going to date anyone like that again. I won't date anyone until they're worthy of me. They treat me with respect. They're kind. They're not um, narcissistic, emotionally manipulative. You see? You say, I say to myself, I don't need people like that. I'd rather be alone than be abused, you know? Have some, you know... It takes a long, long time. I mean, I'm 58 to get here. So if you're like in your 20s, 30s, or even 40s, 
you know, it takes a long time to get to the point where I'm at. All right. Um, I'm not going to go on any longer, but yeah, it's all in the past. And remember, you hold the key to your past. You know, you can unlock the chains, chains that you've been in for a brighter future.